The 2000 vote continues. Once again, Peter Jennings. Well, to call it a cliffhanger at this moment may be actually an understatement, but take a look at the big map of the country and you'll see. Florida, as you know, we've just said is now too close to call. West Virginia, we are now able to make a projection in West Virginia. We project that West Virginia has gone to George W. Bush. George W. Bush gets West Virginia, leaving Wisconsin, Iowa, and Arkansas, still too close to call, as it is in Colorado, Arizona, and Nevada. But we also called a short while ago that Al Gore's home state of Tennessee was won by Mr. Bush, which takes us to Mr. Gore's campaign manager, Donna Brazil, who is in Nashville tonight. Ms. Brazil, you've been in that state for months. Why did you lose it? Well, uh, Peter, I, I still believe that there are absentee ballots that need to be counted here in Tennessee, and there were a lot of early voting that also should be taken into consideration, so perhaps we should call this state into question. I'm not giving up on the, the Tennesseans yet, uh, but let me just say that we've done a tremendous job across the country. Can I stop you before you go across the country? I apologize. No. You really okay. want to seriously call the, res the projections in Tennessee into question as of now? Well, I, I haven't seen the latest results from Shelby County. I know that county, which is uh, uh, Memphis, uh, was voting late tonight. People were standing in line. I don't know what the projections are in terms of how many of the early voting uh, precincts came in versus those that came in late. But, you know, uh, we worked very hard mm -hmm. in this state. The state has had a lot of changes over the last uh, couple of years. And we'll see what happens in Arkansas and Missouri and some of the other states. That, do you know, that how, right do you know now. how many absentee ballots there are? to be counted in the state of Tennessee? No, I do not, but I do know that a lot of people went out and voted early. There were long lines all today in, uh, Matt in Davidson County here in Nashville, but as I said before, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know if all of the precincts are reporting or just some of the precincts uh, from the eastern part of the state, but we'll see what happens uh, and you know, throughout the night. I must assume that you and the Bush campaign share one thing in common at the moment, and that's extreme nervousness. Uh, and optimism as well. I mean, uh, this, this election, it was close. It was too close to call over the weekend. The tide is turning in Al Gore's favor, and I believe that we're going to pull it out tonight. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Donna Brazil, who's the campaign manager for Mr. Gore. I want to go right now to Austin, Texas, where ABC's Dean Reynolds is standing by. Dean, on, on the business of Florida and the other states from the Bush point of view. Well, I don't think it's surprising, Peter, that you would find both campaigns with something critical to say about the coverage. And the Bush campaign is saying that, that the networks may have done them a disservice by calling Florida so early and having the effect of depressing Republican support in other parts of the country because the Republican supporters might have thought that that gave the election, in effect, to Al Gore. Now, that's the second complaint the Bush people have had tonight about the coverage. The first was that they thought that the networks were taking too much time in projecting Bush the winner in both Ohio and West Virginia. But as I say, in a race like this, nobody's going to be happy until the last vote is counted. Okay, thanks very much, Dean Reynolds, who's in Austin tonight. George, George Stephanopoulos, uh, I want you to pick up on a couple of things, if you would. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, Donna Brazil's notion that a lot of states are going to be questioned. Oh, I think there's just no question about that. I don't know if Tennessee is going to be one of them, right. even though the, the black turnout was quite high there. It does look like it's pretty solidly going for Governor Bush tonight. It depends on how close they are at the end, Peter. But in a race where the Electoral College is this close, there's no question if you've got um, final popular votes within the margin, there's going to be a call. Look back to 1960. Uh, in the 1960 race between Nixon and Kennedy, the Republican chairman challenged the votes in 11 states after their vote, and it was a frenzy for several weeks. Right. Just remind people why it is too close. Take a look up there at the electoral vote now. With Mr. Bush has 217, Mr. Gore has 173. Mr. Bush, as you've heard just a moment ago, has questioned the giving of Florida to Mr. Gore and then taking it back, which, as I said, many news agencies did. A little hard to believe, at least in the case of Oregon, where people had a chance to mail in They've their ballots and have had so weeks long. to suppress the vote there. Possibility in Washington. I suppose there's a chance in Washington that some people would stay home, but one of the things we've been hearing from the Bush campaign for several weeks is how energized Republicans are, how enthused they are, how certain they are to come out and vote, no matter what, uh, in this election. So I think that's a little bit questionable whether that would depress um, some Republicans at the last okay, minute. Okay, thanks, George. I want to ask Mark Halpern, our political director, the same question, the effect of early reporting on the western states, particularly Oregon and Washington tonight? Every state has its own rules for how you vote. As you said, Oregon and Washington, heavy mail-in, Oregon all-mail, 
all mail-in ballots, Washington, many of the ballots mailed in. Every other state, though, that's close, again, I don't want to predict as we talked about this earlier, but I would suspect we're in a much more litigious society than we were in 1960. These are two campaigns in an environment of partisanship. I would suspect that the lawyers are going to look at every close state. Donna Brazil saying maybe their absentee ballots in Arkansas still out. Every ballot, the handling of every ballot in every close state, I think is going to get some scrutiny. I don't know the answer to this, among other things, but do we know at this point how many absentee ballots there are out in any given state? It depends on the state and, and how much they tell us, but in, in many of these states, in, for the two that are still not called by us, in Iowa and in Washington, absentee ballots only need to be postmarked by a certain date. They don't need to be in and received by a certain date. So. If those two states end up deciding this, we may not know until they're done counting a little bit down the road. Okay, and in the case of Florida, they are indeed counting the absentee ballots at this very moment. And as we've said before, that was one of the things the Republicans were counting on, was a large absentee ballot of 100,000 votes or more. But on why Florida is still too close to call, ABC's Lynn Schur. Lynn. Peter, according to our exit polling, the reason why Florida is so hard to call at this point has to do with a couple of, with one voter group and one uh, really important issue. Let's start with the voter group. Independence. Independence in Florida today, 22% of the voting population, and of them, how did they vote? 47% for Al Gore. 45% for George Bush. That is a virtual tie. Now, there is another question that we've been asking all day long in states all across the country. Do you want the government to do more for citizens or to do less? In most states, I should tell you, and nationally as a whole, uh, the answer is they want the government to do less. Not in Florida. Let's take a look at the number. Should the government do more or do less? Well, you're going to see it's an even split. 47% say the government should do more, 47% say the government should do less, as you can expect. The do more is about one way, the do less is the other, and that's one of the reasons, Peter. Thanks very much, Lynn. Indeed, as Lynn points out, or alludes in other states in the course of the evening, we have found that that tendency towards less government rather than big government. Big campaign message for George W. Bush all the time. Al Gore is for big government, bigger than Bill Clinton. And it was something from which Mr. Gore did not effectively fight back, as you see reflected in the exit polls this evening. Our historian, Michael Beschloss, 1960, recount Richard Nixon's request. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry to keep on mentioning 1960, Peter, but it great, really great is germane. <laughs> in 1960, you know, John Kennedy won the election, won the Electoral College because of two states, Texas and Illinois. 26,000 vote margin, roughly in Texas, about 8,000 8, votes in Illinois. Richard Nixon felt that there had been vote fraud in both places and was thinking of challenging the results of the election. He met with John Kennedy a couple of days later. Kennedy's first comment was, well, Dick, we really don't know who won the election, do we? And Nixon thought about a recount, count, talked to Dwight Eisenhower, realized that it would put through the country through much too much of a trauma to do that. So the result was that he conceded, but for the next eight years, he kept on telling people, Kennedy stole the election from me in 1960. But Michael, John F. Kennedy's election in 1960 is still clouded on that issue in some people's minds, is it not? That's exactly right. Uh, we do not yet have a settled view on whether there was vote fraud or not. But you know, the historical thing that happened, Peter, was that Richard Nixon was so embittered by what he thought to be the theft of the election from him in 1960 that he was absolutely determined that this would never happen again. That's one reason why he did the kind of things that led to Watergate in 72, 73, and 74. I'm going to come back to you a little later in the evening about embittered candidates after the results. Mark Halpern, we haven't talked about it for many hours. The possibility of tampering with the vote, of fraudulent voting, is very alive in the party's minds. We're talking again, as we said earlier in the evening, over 100 million transactions in all likelihood by the end of the night in terms of how many people voted. There are mistakes made. All of us know when you go and vote, sometimes there's something wrong. That's just accidents. Every election, there's some sort of fraud. It may not be, almost certainly, I would say, not directed by the two presidential campaigns. But you've got local races where people are trying to help themselves. It goes on all the time in American politics. This time, unlike 1960, again, I think the lawyers will want to at least take a look at it. A slight flaw in the great democratic experiment. Thank you very much. We'll be back to continue our coverage of election 2000 in just a moment. Take the ABC News American Election Challenge. Which president was elected with the largest percentage of the popular vote? Lyndon B. Johnson, Bill Clinton, John Kennedy, Thomas Jefferson. In a moment, the answer. This ABC News special is being brought to you by Dodge.
want the lowdown on Dodge Durango? Here's where it's best in class Magnum V8 power. This is a national sales alert from Dodge. Effective immediately, you can get low 0.9 financing for 60 months on 2000 Dodge Durango. You can now save more than $5,600 or get up to $2,000 cash allowance. We now return you to your regularly scheduled commercial. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. We noticed tons of surfers just eating fish tacos on the docks. So we created just a menu based on food that we like. Kind of like surf food as opposed to Mexican food. Now that we're growing, the need for the financial partner was real important. Finding somebody who could help us to fulfill our dreams down the road. That's where Merrill Lynch has stepped up. They were willing to take a chance with us. They saw past the shorts and t-shirts. Oh, we're still keeping to the core. We're still yeah. surfing we're in the groove. <laughs> Wednesday. Five seconds, Drew. The Drew Carey Show goes live in three time zones. Ooh, I better get into my costume. <laughs> then, Caitlin co-hosts on Live with Regis. You don't want to poke me. Don't want to poke you? Why not? On Spin City. All right. You better phone a friend. It's all new. See you Wednesday live on ABC. Next Tuesday. We're putting this band together. A son's dream and a father's expectations collide. Maybe you should just put this band thing on hold for a while. What? And it will all come to a breaking point. I'm not going to stand by and watch you make the well, biggest mistake really of your life. The critics call it first class and all new once and again next Tuesday on ABC. The answer to the ABC News American Election Challenge, which president was elected with the largest percentage of the popular vote, is Lyndon B. Johnson. Elected in 1964 with 61.1% of the popular vote. Once again, Peter Jennings. 61% of the vote, Lyndon Johnson in 1964. But it brings up a very interesting issue for us tonight. Because if you look over there at the vote, which has the electoral vote and the popular vote as of now, we're, we're very early in the popular vote if you look at the numbers because we all think that at least 100 million people will cast ballots tonight. But currently, Al Gore has 48% of the vote with 23 million votes and George Bush has 24 million votes. That may not be a very accurate reflection of what's happening at this moment because it's hard to keep up with the popular vote. But George Stephanopoulos, on the subject of the obvious one, if one man wins the popular vote and the other man wins the electoral vote, who wins? Whoever wins the Electoral College. It's not who scores the most runs or who wins the most votes. It's who wins the most states. And uh, that's always been our system. There have been three times in our history. The last time was in 1888 right. um, when the person who won the Electoral College, uh, I mean, when the person who won the popular vote, Garfield, did not win the Electoral College. Um, most people believe it's unlikely, although the Gore campaign has said throughout that if they're within a point or a point and a half, there is a way they can win in the Electoral College, even if they lose the popular vote. But there's a lot of big states out there yet. And there have been others. There are actually three circumstances, I think, here, where the popular vote exceeded the electoral vote. That's Winter. right. And um, I don't have all of them right now, but in 1824, 20, right, right. Uh, John Quincy Adams was elected president, even though a Andrew Jackson won the plurality of both the popular vote and the electoral vote, but he didn't win a majority of those. So John Quincy Adams cut a deal with Henry Clay the Speaker, of the, Speaker right. of the House, who was then made Secretary of State. Four years later, Andrew Jackson came back and was elected president. And every time it happens, people wish to temper, to tamper with the Electoral College. And it just simply never happens. There but they're quite modern movements to change there it. There have been calls. I think the last time was Birch Bayh, actually, a right. Democrat, in the, about 25 years ago, tried to get a movement to change it. The Republicans opposed it. Um, this time, we'll, I'm sure if we get into the situation this time, you'll see a lot of calls from whoever the loser Jimmy is. Jimmy Carter wanted to change it, too, or thought it was That's worth right. considering. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, we can't talk about vote tampering without Sam Donaldson leaping out of his position there. Sam? Well, Peter, the classic case of alleged vote fraud was in 1948 in Texas. I say alleged only because of the sensibilities that I have toward the people in the Johnson family who are still alive. Lyndon Johnson was running for the Senate, very tight race. On election night, there were three small counties in South Texas. Duval County, owned by George Parr, the political boss, being the central one. They withheld the ballot box, famous ballot box 13. Not only did they vote dead people, but they waited to see how many votes Lyndon Johnson needed. And then finally, Eureka. Here comes ballot box 13, and everyone voted for Lyndon Johnson. And he won in the state by 87 votes and earned his nickname, Landslide Lyndon. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Let's go to West Virginia now and take a look at that. You know, we've already projected West Virginia for Mr. Bush. This is a state, Lynn, which has uh, gone with the Democrats for a long period of time.
in every election, I think, since 1960, but...